Thanks for staying with us. And now, the Central Bank of Nigeria has directed banks to stop charges on cash deposits until September 30, 2024. The Apex Bank disclosed this in a secular dated May 6, 2024, signed by its Director of Banking Supervision at Daytona at DDG. Our guest this morning to look at this development is Ogbonna Ukuku, Investment and Economic Development Expert. Good morning and welcome to the program. All right, thank you so much for having me. Hmm. Uh, help us explain uh, what is really going on um, in, in this thing. The CBN has directed banks to suspend charges on deposit till September. Just walk us through the implications of this and everything we need to know around it. Okay, so from my understanding, um, it's a very simple thing. No, policies come out because um, you want, there's something you're trying to achieve. Now, um, it was in 2019, about September 2019, September 19th or so, 2019, the then Central Bank uh, Governor announced that every um, deposit above uh, 3 million naira for corporate uh, uh, accounts, and um, I think, so I think um, something around um, less than a million naira for, for personal accounts must pay a premium you know, above, if that's your committee deposit money, so you have to pay. Now, that policy was actually um, instituted because they were trying to push the cashless policy of the central bank because um, there was need for us to go, or, you know, uh, go mobile, you know, try to use the app and all of that to do transfers. Now, by September this year, it's going to be five years. So what I understand is that the central bank is trying to review that policy to see if we've been able to get the penetration we wanted to, you know, have at that, at, you know, at the time that policy was put in place. So by September 19th, um, 2024, it would be exactly five years. So um, I believe that the central bank is trying to try things out to see, okay, let's even review, have the policy help, or did it make people to pull back their funds? Because people, instead of putting their monies in the bank, looking at the value of money and the money they have to pay, to you know, have those monies be deposited in banks, they rather keep the money or find a way to secure their funds because money being in the bank is for for safety, you know, for you know, for other benefits around it. So these are is the cost benefit analysis. I mean, I'm talking about the depositors now. So I think the central bank has looked at it, you know, because if you look at the bank, the the the, the monies that are in circulation, uh, you know, within the banks. You know that the, the the central bank is also monitoring, and the and the money is within the hands of people. So it's also good for them to you know try some other thing to see. Okay, maybe it's this policy that is hindering people from depositing funds because I mean it's also, also almost almost the ratio is almost fifty fifty. The money is circulating in banks, and the money is in people's hands. So I mean it, I mean it's just something that happens when you want to review a policy. You look at it and see. Okay, after five years, have this policy as uh, this policy did it benefit the economy did it help in any way so i believe that's exactly what the central bank is trying to do and um i think um in, in, you know by the time they review from now to the end of september which is be exactly, exactly five years they will know whether to discontinue or you know uh, to see um whether to you know to go to reverse back to to people uh, you know put, uh, you know paying a premium on depositing funds but as far as i'm concerned i don't think there's any need for people to you know to pay money to pay, pay a premium to deposit their funds because i mean it is the job of the bank to receive my money because i mean they are charging there are other charges they they are I'm being charged for putting my money in the bank so why do i have to pay a premium on depositing funds that is supposed to be in circulation which is their job as 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 um, a deposit money bank yeah because i, I was just wondering how uh, i will take my money to the bank because they want to encourage online banking, they want to en encourage electronic banking, they, they will now take something from my money and reduce the amount of money that I have. It was like, I think, 500,000 uh, 500, or so uh, for yeah. individuals. Anything above 500,000, yeah. you pay something and all that. So why are they even <laughs> thinking about four months? Why is it impossible almost to them to just say we are removing it, especially in the face of so much uh, taxation that is coming on nowadays? 0.5% uh, has come up again for cyber security and so many other things. If you want to reduce all the tax or deduct all the taxes uh, that are on your one naira, it's, it's crazy. So why can't they just remove it? 
So this is what I think that happens most of the time, you know, so taking decisions like that without having stakeholders, you know, stakeholder participation is one of the problems we've had. So it's like you are in a lab. So when you're doing your, your, your prepared, you are putting, you know, you're watching the chemical reaction. So I think the first thing to do, I agree with the central bank, I think the first thing to do is to see. So you suspend and then watch and see the reaction in the, in the market. What, how the market reacts will actually, you know, give you, you know, the, the that, you know, that um, evidence to say, okay, since the market has started reacting positively, so I think this is the best thing. So is either I, I I give benefits to the banks or give benefits to the to the people, the depositors. But as far as I'm concerned, speaking from my own professional point of view, now the argument at that point in time was just, like I said, for that penetration of online banking, for that penetration, because, I mean, central bank was spending a lot of money trying to manage our funds, you know, mutilation of funds was a lot, you know, the burden of managing our currency was a whole lot for them. So that was the argument that they had. And then as soon as that, you have tried it for five years, and then you've also noticed that the money is in circulation, it's almost 50-50 with the monies that's within the, you know, that is within in the hands of people. So the best thing for you to do is to, okay, let's try something else. So if, this, if, if that's a position, so let's try it a bit and see. Maybe after four months, and I believe that after four months, or, you know, or thereabouts, they're going to just say, oh, oh come on, I mean, this, these are the evidence. Because people have started to deposit their funds in the bank, and we have control over the funds by way of monitoring the funds, because as it is now, you can't monitor if you, if you are monitoring only 50% of the funds in circulation in your economy or in the market, you are not, you don't have full control. So I think that full control is what the central bank, central bank needs at this point in time, so that you can actually do your management properly. You know, so it's better the monies are within the bank than you know being in the hands of people. Because even security-wise, it's not even wise for us to have a lot of funds in the hands of people as against being in the bank. It, it, it makes no sense to, to the common man, even the layman, because if you're encouraging me uh, or dissuading me from or discouraging me from keeping money at home and then you're depriving me of part of this money because I'm taking it to you, it doesn't make sense if, if you see that as a, a way of encouragement. And so I'm just even surprised that uh, there is still 50-50 uh, of money in circulation and money in, in the central bank or in the banks because... Uh, if, <laughs> but I'm not the only Nigerian, I would have said a lot of people would prefer to just keep their money at home. It's just that maybe you're afraid of bandits or something. But I'm depositing my money. Sometimes in a, even a, a deposit account, maybe not fixed deposit, but in a deposit account, and then you find out that when you go after a while, your money has reduced because of some charges, uh, this here, this there, and all that. Your money has reduced. But in your opinion, do you think electronic um, transactions will even do better or can even do well in the kind of situation, financial situation we find ourselves? I'm not talking about the fact that the economy is difficult and all that, but if people are being encouraged to put their monies in the bank and use less cash, do you think everything surrounding that financial sector is encouraging enough for people to switch on to mobile banking as a preference to holding cash. Now, so it's the case of chicken and egg, right? So, um, so which one goes first or which one comes first? Now, those who provide the infrastructure required for this online banking also expect a whole lot of traffic because the charges are very minimal. So because of that, so in volume that drives you know, the sustainability of such, you know, um, uh, uh, for such, such providers, now you see the new charge, charge the new charges that's going to be introduced, which is cyber crime. It's, it's actually for them to build, you know, sophisticated um, uh, firewalls to, you know, to protect people's funds from being, you know, hijacked and all of that. So I, I think, you know, most of the time that's what that fund is for. Now, if you want to now, you know, you know, create an ecosystem that works. So first things first, there has to be a charge for that protection of people's funds. Now, so that is why I think the central bank is trying to also do this. Take out this other one, which, as far as I'm concerned, um, does not make as much sense, you know, and then introduce the one that makes sense. Because this other one, yes, the banks will say, oh, it costs a whole lot to protect people's funds. Okay, now the people are not paying for it. 
you are charging them to pay, you know, to protect their funds when it comes to cyber, you know, um, the, the cyber um, issues that people have and all of that. So, but for those who, the providers, they need traffic. And for them to increase infrastructure to make it so seamless, you know, because I mean, if you see in the United States of America, there are organizations like Zelle, so it's easy for you to just move money from here to there. But I mean, with records. So, but because the infrastructure is so strong, you know, because the bandwidth you're going to use, the technology, you know, the backbone, the the, the internet backbone that you're going to use, so these things all come together. To but create is that, that is that, that supposed is to be my problem? Is that supposed to be the problem of the masses? Because if no, you say you are an institution that can, service, can service, service. safeguard okay, my ahead. money, you should have these things and I will trust you with my money. Do I have to, you know, maybe they, they station a, a, a police station in my community and the community people will now be donating to pay this, uh, the policemen. Why are they there? They are being paid by the government to do what they're supposed to do. So it's, should it be my problem that you don't have the facility to take care of my funds? What if I just decide to keep my funds because you are not competent enough? Why should we pay? Okay, now, so this is where I think we'll see. So this is, is an added value. So it's, a, it's a value addition. When it comes to services, we are providing services. So it's an added, you know, value added. So because if you keep your funds at home, so you have to make sure that uh, your mega is there. You can either have to have policemen who will guide your house or you have you know security and you're going to pay those security people to keep you know your your surroundings safe so and then you have to also be awake at night to make sure that nobody comes in to you know to take your phone so, so that's just to give um, a, a a dramatic structure around the whole conversation now but as far as i'm as far as i am concerned they are adding value so it, it's not, there's no problem with you charging for adding value minimally to add value but the point still remains if you use the illustration of police station, no, that, that would be less. We're trying to match, you know, apple and orange. So it is a, it's a situation of a, somebody providing service. And the service I'm going to be providing for you is something that will make it convenient for you to sit down in the comfort of your home. With your phone, you can transfer money to anybody. I mean, that's value addition. So I, I, I should pay for it. But at the time that this value is not being the monies that you're paying for it is not commensurate with the service that you're getting i think the banks should charge yes those who provide this you know the infrastructure that you know support the ecosystem should charge money but the one i don't understand is because you want a penetration to an online or migration to online transaction mm. or cashless policy then you bring out charges. That's the one I did not. I was not able to understand. We tried to make sense out of it, but it wasn't making sense. So the the present central bank is now looking at those things. I think it doesn't make sense. But this is the one that makes sense, which is even less because I mean, charging me three percent of the money that I'm about to deposit. That's a whole lot of money if you look at it. Depends on the volume that you're bringing into the bank. So the reality is, is taking out bad to introduce good. That's exactly what is going on now. Well, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> well, the banks use my money to trade. The banks use my money to invest. The bank doesn't pay me back for using my money to trade. And then they're asking me to pay for their security. To pay. I don't understand because I'm not an expert, so let's leave it at that. But we see these things happening. For instance, today in the Guardian newspaper, we have... Um, a graphic um, display of what we lose. Naira debit card replacement is 1,000 Naira. Individual cash deposit above uh, limit, 2%. Corporate cash deposit above limit, 3%. SMS alert, mm -hmm. 4, 4 Naira. Statement of account, 200 Naira. Stamp duty, 50 Naira. Foreign currency debit or credit cards, $10. And then hardware token, 2,000 Naira. 500 naira so all these are here then you're talking about service charge you're talking about a lot of other things before you know it your money is gone so i don't know i don't know okay let me just put it back to you what do you think needs to be done for people to happily migrate to the online banking that you've, we've just been talking about right now Okay, so in 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 you know in other clients, what happens is that you make it convenient. Just that's why I said value addition. So if you make me comfortable about you know using my mobile you know my mobile phone or online platform to transfer money, I will willingly and gladly want to be there. 
That's number one. Then number two, um, if the charges, if, you're, if, if, if the value you are giving to me, the, the, the money you are asking me to pay is commensurate. Yes, of course, I would love to be there. I'll comfortably want to, I don't want to go and stay on a queue in a bank because I want to, I want to, you know, pay monies to my staff, people who are working for me, maybe in a Medugri and, I, you know, I'm doing a contract in Medugri. I don't have to start carrying money in my in bags or go send somebody that I don't trust to go, okay, I'm going to transfer, we'll go to the bank and pick up the phone. So I mean, if the person, in the comfort of their phone, they can receive the money. So for me, if I do my cost benefit analysis and see that the value that you're giving me, the money that I'm paying for it is commensurate, fine. But some of the, like I said, some of this, for some of the charges that don't make sense. So this is where I need central bank to streamline some of the uh, charges that I'm being um, charged as far as, you know, you reeled out a, a whole lot. But although some of them are one-off, you know, that some of them that are just one-off, uh, that when you're, when you're getting, when you're, you know, just a one-off migration, as soon as you get in, you pay the, the monies and then you don't pay anymore. Because, I mean, as far as I am concerned, as far as I know, the banks most of the time are not even the ones that provide some of these services. Like the ATMs, it's not the banks that. So there are other people who provide the services. So deposit money banks, their job is just to receive your money, like you said, invest the money, give you interest on your money, depending on the kind of account that you have with them. So, but nevertheless, some of this, um, there are inter-switch, there are different companies that provide MasterCard. So there are different companies that provide some of this, you know, infrastructure that support online, you know, transactions. So they are the ones who charge the money. So they are charging it through the banks because for them to provide the support that you need, so the banks will engage them because the banks are not, you know, IT savvy. They, that's not their job. Their job is to hold those money. But it's just that the whole ecosystem is domiciled within the banking premises. So those ATM machines you see, they don't belong to the banks. So the banks, so there are people who own those um, ATM machines. There are people who, you know, provide those um, uh, structures that you need to make sure that, you know, those seamless, you know, movement of funds from here to there happens. So it is those people that need those funds because they need to support their business. So it's just that the entire thing, you know, has to happen, you know, within the deposit money bank, you know, banks. Well, I just I was just uh, laughing when you said the, the banks collect your money and give you an interest. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know which account they put interest on. <clears throat> Maybe fixed deposit account, uh, but um, in a year you might but find one. But savings account, in but your savings account, account they, they and do. that is savings, all there is. Savings account. And they then they, the ATMs don't work on weekdays, they do, uh, weekends. They don't work on public holidays. They don't work maybe uh, three, uh, two days out of the working week, maybe Monday to Friday, it works till Wednesday or something, and all that. I don't even know how the banks work these days, but it's very discouraging, really, really discouraging. You, the experts, uh, please talk to them and let them encourage us. We hate carrying money around. If we know that we can always transfer, we can always use the ATM, we can always do anything we want to do uh, with minimal cost, we will migrate uh, gladly to online banking. But unfortunately, this is where we have to wrap it up on this segment of the okay. show. And we'd like to thank you, Mr. Okuku, for coming on the program. All right. Thanks for having me. Mm. Mr. Ogbonna Okuku, Okuku is an investment and economic development expert. He was talking to us about uh, uh, what the development that, that is happening. The CBN has directed banks to suspend charges on deposit till September. We're going to take another short break and return with our last hot topic. Stay with us. <laughs>